What is Schroth Method Breathing for Scoliosis? The Schroth Method is an exercise-based approach for scoliosis treatment. Now, for any exercise to be effective in doing any type of management or treatment for scoliosis, it must be considered an SSE. An SSE stands for Specific exercise for scoliosis. If it's not a specific scoliosis exercise in SSE, the exercise is not considered to be an effective treatment for scoliosis. So the Schroth method is an SSE. There's many, many versions of SSEs that use many similar techniques. And it normally involves using a specialized type, specialized type of physical therapy and customized exercises. And normally it involves breathing techniques and postural modeling. Now, many of these SSEs share this same component. Now, Schroth is only one type. And it's been probably the oldest version, but now Schroth has broken into many different types of varieties and variations. So there's very few practitioners that practice pure Schroth, if you would say, it's more Schroth style. So when we talk about this, understand that it's the Schroth style or the Schroth method behind this breathing that we're interested in. And this breathing is something that we call rotational angular breathing. And rotational angular breathing is a specialized breathing technique that involves patients learning how to breathe into the concavity of their scoliosis curvature. And this is the part that actually bends. So if you imagine a curve this way, this would be the concave side. And this breathing into this side really works on trying to derotate the spine, which we'll talk about in a second. But it also focuses on something that we call expansion. Or chest expansion is a very important component when we look at scoliosis exercise and treatment. Now, breathing into the concave size, how does this really help? Well, making an effort to inhale into the concave side. Now, understand when you inhale, you can't just put more air into one side than the other. That's not what we're talking about. And a lot of patients kind of get confused that try to breathe more air into one side. You're, when you're trying to force breathing, we're trying to say use the muscles on that side of your body more extensively to try to expand that rib cage on that side. And this is a common effect that typically occurs in thoracic scoliosis where there's a rib cage arch. And typically what ends up happening on the con cave side, the, the ribs will go inward and on the convex side, the ribs will come backward. So a patient with scoliosis will have a rib hump on one side and flattening on the other side. When we want a patient to breathe into that concave side, we're trying to make them expand and open up that side that has gone flat. And this, this allows us to really derotate a curvature. This, the, the ribs have become this way because of something called spinal rotation. In scoliosis, the spine bends, but it also twists. And this twist component that occurs, the ribs are attached to them and they twist too. And when the spine uh, twists, you get the rib humping on the one side and the rib flattening on the other side. This rotational angular breathing is to try to cause the rib cage to expand on that side. And if you can expand the ribs on size, you can assist in derotation. And when performed correctly, this can have a significant effect on what we see in the, in the scoliosis and primarily can help with a lot of postural issues that need to be addressed. And these postural issues can be quite significant in a patient with scoliosis. The postural issues that are associated are typically in the chest symmetry. When we look through chest symmetry, like I mentioned, we're gonna see from the back, one side kind of going backwards and one side kind of leaning inward. So teaching somebody to be aware of these postural changes through these proper breathing typically can have a significant effect. In addition, when you add the prescription of some mirror image exercises or the importance of kind of holding their body in a corrected position while performing these breathing, breathing it can really over time really introduce some significant improvement. We know that Patients with scoliosis, their posture will degrade over time if not treated, and we'll see bad this, this initial shape that we see in a patient with scoliosis. As the curve worsens, the shape will worsen with them. Well, if we can create posture awareness and help patients maintain their normal alignment through these exercises and proper breathing, it can have a significant effect. Now, there was a time that when 
exercises and scoliosis treatment was completely questioned. In fact, as surgical treatments became more and more mainstream, we would say there's been less and less focus on conservative approaches to scoliosis that involve exercise and therapy and bracing. However, now we're understanding the importance of how the conservative approach can have a significant impact on patients with scoliosis. Now, the Schroth method of breathing or Schroth style can be used in many different approaches, but it was founded by Schroth, again, one of the oldest SSEs, but now it can be used in many different types of approaches like CAS, like scoli balance, like the Botchwitch exercises, like Lyons exercises, these are all different types of SSEs that use a breathing component to really try to expand the chest and improve the shape of the rib cage to help manage and treat scoliosis. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you have any questions about this topic or other scoliosis questions, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish new videos just like this.